Hey, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here of Marty Music. Thank you so much for supporting and watching another video. Now today we're tackling a topic that is almost too large and too loud for one video. So buckle up. This one is for you gearheads out there. You guitarists who can't stop reading guitar equipment reviews, debating other guitarists endlessly about the tonal possibilities, or those continually scratching their heads to figure out just how their favorite guitarist got that tone. Here are some of the most notable guitar rigs that have contributed to iconic guitar sounds in all of music history. Number five, Jimi Hendrix. Our first rig up is a classic. The setup used by Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock in 1969. Hendrix's Vox Wah pedal humanized his guitar and enhanced his expression, allowing him to make it sing. And Hendrix is one of the reasons the wah pedals are standard in most rock rigs today. I've got mine. The next pedal in this chain was a Dallas Arbiter Fuzz Face. This gave Hendrix his signature fuzz heard on countless songs and enabled him to be one of the pioneers of distortion. Last up was Univox Univod, which is a chorus pedal and vibrato pedal made to imitate the sound of an organ playing through a rotating Leslie speaker. Now, while the Univibe didn't really provide a great emulation of the Leslie speaker, it did provide some great chorus and vibrato effects that contributed heavily to Hendrix's sound. Number four, Ed Sheeran. The centerpiece of Looper Aficionado Ed's setup is, of course, his customized loop station. He calls it the Chewy Monster. Despite its appearance as a large effects pedal, the Chewy Monster is actually just a giant pedal board controller that operates a Roland FC300 MIDI controller off stage. The FC300 controls Ed's loop processor, a plugin called Mobius 2, running on Ableton Live. This customized system is an upgrade from Sheeran's previous setup, in which the main component was a simple Boss RC30 looper pedal. The reason for the upgrade was sound quality. Basically, the new setup allows for vocal and guitar loops to be mixed separately in live situations. The Chewy Monsta also allows Ed to cancel certain loops without stopping all of them and create more layers without losing clarity. Even more recently, Sharon has upgraded to the Chewy 2, an updated version of the Chewy Monsta that includes a keyboard input. Number three, Dave Grohl during the 2000 era of the Foo Fighters. Now Grohl's visionary sound defined the best of early 2000s rock and roll. 2002 saw the Foo Fighters release one by one winning the group two Grammy Awards, and they included the massive singles, Times Like These, and One by One. Of course, behind all of this was the massive Grohl guitar sound. To achieve this, Grohl's pedal rig started with a Boss DM2, a fairly common analog delay pedal. This pedal was used for everything from subtle delay to large echoes. Next in his chain was an MXR Phase 90 pedal, very popular, responsible for the phaser sound in a few Foo Fighters classics. This pedal combines phase, chorus, and vibrato effects into a simple, one-knob design that creates a unique tone. Lastly, Grohl used a Whirlwind AB switcher to toggle between amps. He had a pair of AC30 set for clean tones and a pair of Mesa Boogie dual rectifier half stacks set for distortion. Number two, Jack White. The White Stripes ushered in a renewed love for that garage rock sound in 2001 with the release of the album White Blood Cells and the single fell in love with a girl. With only his guitar and Meg White's drumming to create a super full sound, White found a way to make his guitar explode from the speakers and fill the soundscape. White's signature sound starts with the Digitech whammy pitch shifting pedal, which is the element responsible for that iconic Seven Nation Army riff. White's other main pedal is an electro harmonics Big Muff Pie, a tube distortion pedal that provides some super intense drive. And finally, White likes to use a Voodoo Lab tremolo pedal, which adds color and unique tone to some of his solos. For amplification, White's main go-to is a Fender Vintage Reissue 65 Twin Reverb paired with a Sears Silvertone 6x10 100 watt combo amp. With such a tasteful and well-curated rig, Jack White reminded us how versatile and mind-blowingly huge a guitar can sound in the right hands. That brings us to number one, Slash. Now this is one of the most eccentric and complex rigs in rock and roll history. It's Slash's 2007 rig used while touring with Velvet Revolver. This baby featured over 30 processing and wireless components, 
as well as four different kinds of Marshall heads stacked on six 4x12 Marshall cabinets. Some of the most notable pedals included a Boss OC2 octave pedal, an MXR MC401 line driver, an MXR MC402 overdrive, a Hale talk box, and a Dunlop wah pedal. This setup also included countless rack effects processors, routing pedals and racks, as well as a hum eliminator, I bet, uh, multiple wireless units, and power conditioners. Wouldn't want to be the guitar tech packing that one up every night. Tell me about your rig, or even your dream rig, down in the comments below. <laughs> what pedals or amps would you want if you had a rockstar budget? And while you're there, subscribe to Marty Music. Thanks for watching.